Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In the conclusion of his classic study, The Quest for the Historical Jesus, biblical scholar Albert Schweitzer wrote of Jesus, he comes to us as one unknown, without a name, as of old, by the lakeside. That was 1906, and Schweitzer was speaking of the failure of the first 100 years of critical scholarship to recover who Jesus was. Schweitzer's conclusion hardly seems accurate today, for in the century since Schweitzer, the search for Jesus has produced a wealth of knowledge and discoveries. Jesus comes to us now not as one unknown, but as one about whom we know a great deal. The social and religious context in which he lived and the nuances of what he taught are now known. Just a few years ago, debates about what Jesus really taught and did took place only in theological school seminary classrooms, far from the view and review of the public and the person in the pew. Today, the popular press regularly runs, especially as we near Lent and Easter, updates on the search for Jesus. Documentaries abound and television and even theater movies are made about the life of Jesus. For some, for many, this new historical search is a welcome relief as we peel away the false and misconceived and discover more and more about who Jesus really was and what Jesus really taught and really did. For others, this historical search can be more of a frightening prospect, a threatening challenge to long-held beliefs. In every case, the search for Jesus is a reality which cannot be avoided or ignored. Still, you may wonder, well, preacher, what difference does all of this make to me? You may even resent any shattering of cherished notions you have about Jesus that were taught to you in Sunday school as a child, but were actually not based on historical research into the life of Jesus. You may feel like George Eliot, that pioneering woman novelist of the 19th century, an otherwise liberal and worldly person who said she became physically ill while translating the groundbreaking historical critical study of Jesus by David Friedrich Strauss. So why can't we leave well enough alone? I believe the search for the real life, historical Jesus is important and must continue because of faith's root conviction that my life, my hope, my faith, my complete destiny are tied up in the man Jesus with whom God was present in a powerful way. Biblical scholar Stephen J. Patterson puts it this way, the quest for Jesus expresses the deepest Christian conviction that God can and does encounter persons in the particularity of human existence. So, if Jesus is not to remain Schweitzer's great unknown, where do we search for Jesus? We begin with the scriptures. As Jesus said of himself in his inaugural sermon in Nazareth, the scriptures are fulfilled in our hearing of them. But what we find in the study of scriptures is that the scriptures do not speak of Jesus with one voice. Sometimes the voice of Jesus sings in concert with the first followers of Jesus. Other times, Jesus sings a song which falls harshly on our ears as when Jesus condemns the rich and demands that his followers leave everything behind, possessions, livelihood, even family, if they would walk with him. Or when Jesus calls us to a life of more 
generous forgiveness than we are prepared to give. Or when Jesus demands a level of sacrifice more costly than we bargained for. The Jesus we find in the scriptures is not the blue-eyed, gentle, cultured Jesus of our Sunday school pictures or gospel hymns. The Jesus of the gospels is more like his cousin, that wild man prophet John the Baptist. He's more like John than he is like refined philosophers like John Locke or Thomas Jefferson. Above all, the Jesus we find in the Gospels is a first century Palestinian rabbi obsessed with God, a prophet who announced the coming of God's rule and who declared with painful clarity God's concern for the oppressed, the poor, the outcast, and all those whom official religion sometimes declares to be sinners. The Jesus of the Gospels speaks of obedience and sacrifice and judgment more than it does the grace and peace we find in the rest of the New Testament. One convenient resolution of the competing and contradictory views of Jesus that we find in the New Testament is to make a distinction between the Jesus of history and the Christ of faith. A distinction that is a helpful one but only to a point when we speak of who Jesus really was as opposed to the living Christ in whom we believe, we make a distinction that is helpful, but not all the way because the historic faith of the church is that Jesus is risen, meaning the real life, historical human being, Jesus. The first confession of the church and the confession of the people who followed Jesus those who would come to be known as Christians, was Jesus is Lord. And the first question facing those who knew Jesus back then remains the first question facing us today. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus for me? You can only answer that question if you have some knowledge of who Jesus was. The search for Jesus begins with the Bible, but it does not end there. For the greatest proof that Jesus meant something of importance is the life and ministry of the church. It is in the church that the community of followers first founded by Jesus continues to live. It is here that the Jesus of history and the Christ of faith are one and the same. The Jesus of the church and the Christ confess holds central place for us. It is here that the life and words of Jesus are studied and struggled with and reflected upon. It is here that the word of Jesus is preserved and proclaimed and heard and responded to. And it is here that the word of Jesus is joined with the sacraments of baptism and Holy Communion. At Communion, the Jesus of history and the Christ of faith are one. In the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, we remember the Last Supper, and we remember that the Last Supper is not the last word about Jesus. In Holy Communion, we remember the death of Jesus on Good Friday, And we celebrate the Easter joy that Jesus is not dead, but Jesus lives. In Holy Communion, our search for Jesus leads us through Jesus to the God present in Jesus, the God who speaks to us through Jesus, the God through whom we dare to proclaim, Christ is alive and comes to bring good news to this and every age till earth and sky and ocean ring with joy, with justice, love, and praise. The book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, ends with the words, Come, Lord Jesus. This is an urgent plea, a cry of desperation, maybe even a prayer for successful search 
for the man in whom we believe. It is a search that in every generation, every person, every man, every woman, every boy and girl must take. A search each of us must make. With open and inquisitive minds and led by the same spirit that led Jesus, it is a search that will be successful. Then Jesus will come to us not as one unknown, but as a man we know and love, a teacher, a friend, our brother, the living word of the living God. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. <laughs>